All right, we are, have been discussing this kind of part two of uh, <clears throat> last class, which we called the father gave the prodigal what he asked, part two right now. <clears throat> and um, we have been talking about um, the fact that sometimes when the father gives us what we ask that we assume we're spiritual and don't realize that maybe we're off. And remember, we're, we're putting this in the context first and foremost in the prodigal son story where the father gave him his living and gave him his third of all the father's living <clears throat> and, the, um, and went ahead and gave the elder son his double portion. Um, so then we started looking at, uh, right now, we're in um, Psalm, what is it, 78. And we'll start at verse 21 to just catch up to the thing that we're talking about. And they were, you know, remember they were murmuring, they wanted flesh, and that's the words that's used. They wanted flesh, and... Um, uh, and they were, it's one of those places where they tempted God. And so the Lord said, well, I'll give you flesh if you want that. <laughs> if that's what you want, okay, you know. So, verse 21, <clears throat> Therefore the Lord heard this and was wroth, so a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also came up against Israel, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation, though he had commanded the clouds from above, and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them the corn of heaven. And so um, this isn't even, they haven't even got to a place here where they've been wandering for 40 years. This is just the 11 day journey. <laughs> At least should have been, you know, should have been 11 days and it took them 40 years. Must have been a guy driving because he wouldn't ask for directions. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I don't know where this stuff comes from. <laughs> and um, so he's, he's a little like in awe of the fact that he had literally opened heaven them you know it, he didn't just bless them in the earth he opened heaven to them and gave as it were I mean we'll just put it like this gave as it were that which is of his realm to them and the next verse verse 25 he said man did eat angels food I don't think it was angel food cake though. yeah because the word manna in the Hebrew means what is it that is the meaning of it. What is this? <clears throat> he sent them meat to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven, and by his power he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust. Okay, so I'm, here's what I'm thinking so far. I don't know. I, I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> but I'm thinking, you know, it's just not a good idea to... To what? Ask for flesh. To Well, let's put it this way. The Lord could say, you're asking for it. <laughs> you are. This is coming your way, you know, because you re see, it's not just somebody who's been rejected or whatever. It is the open. He didn't say, well, you know, you wounded my heart in that sin. He said, this is, you haven't even finished an 11 day journey yet. You haven't even finished. You barely started. And since I have foreknowledge, you've got a long way to go. Um, and it shouldn't already be to this place because I have sent enough of my realm to you where you can say, we're with you, Lord. We're with you, Lord. And isn't that really, I mean, it sounds too simple. But to be with the Lord is big to him. 
and to not be with the Lord because we want to be with us, our flesh. There, there you have the greater sin. Now, only someone who really, really loves and understands, for example, the prodigal with the father, he, he clearly didn't love and understand his father at that stage. Things changed, didn't they? They got better. But <clears throat> he clearly didn't understand the violation. I think in some place in all of our hearts, we know that to go with our flesh and not be with him is, though it sounds so simple, is probably one of the greatest violations. You know, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. It wasn't just with him in, in ways and heart and I'm with you wherever you want to take me, but I am also one with you. I mean, that's, it's two different things, isn't it? It's two different things. But they're both important. I mean, obviously, he's waiting on oneness, so that's the most important thing. But, you know, there has to be an understanding that if I choose my flesh, if I choose that, if that's what I choose, and we'll get into the reality. I mean, this is really talk. This is telling us the results and the action, but we'll talk about the realities here in a minute of that. But if we do that, then the Lord's love will open the door to our flesh. And that's not good. You know, that's not good. We'll see that in the scriptures too. Um, he rained flesh upon them as dust and feathered fowls like as the sand of the sea, and he let it fall in the midst of their camp round about their habitation. So that now it's fallen in the camp. And it's all around them. <clears throat> so they did eat and were well filled. They were well filled for he gave them their own desire. He gave them what they wanted. They were not estranged from their lust. But while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the, hmm, the fattest of them and smoked down the chosen men of Israel. Now we find this. We're in Psalms here. Let's just see one more place that's talking about this same thing. And it's in, still in Psalms, but it's Psalms 106. So turn there with me if you would. <clears throat> Psalm 106, and we're going to just look at two verses here. Verse 14 and 15. But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And here's verse 15. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. He gave them their request, but sent leanness into their I can't imagine a worse thing. I just can't imagine a worse thing. <clears throat> so just in my notes here, I wrote, we think the Father would not give us something that is not good for us. God wouldn't give me something that's not good for me. Um, with the prodigal, the father uh, laid down his goods. And so, so here's the spirit of the father, though. The father, the spirit of the father is he laid down everything that he'd lived and worked and brought about. He laid it down. And the son, his spirit was... The father lost, as it were. The son gained. Let's see if I can find it here. The son gained, but he would throw it all away before he learned a single lesson. That's kind of, that's kind of weird. It was before he even learned a lesson. <laughs> he didn't start learning the lessons until the hog pen, but the stuff had been already gone. Remember what we read at first up here? Um, where is it? I think my, my thing jumped somehow. Anyway, so, um, so we see a different spirit at work in the Father, and the, uh, the Father is trying to produce his son in us. Why? Okay, because we're so bad? 
no, for God's sake, no, 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 and no again. Yes, we are bad. I, I mean, I'm not disagreeing with that. We all need help. You know, there's no question there. The father loves his son, and the father wants to see that nature and that spirit and that life flowing out of us. And can you imagine if it was flowing out of a body of believers that put one another first, even to their own loss? Hmm. So, um, I wrote, um, did the son eventually realize how wrong he was? The, did he realize the specific act of taking without death you know, and it's almost like, here's what I think. Without death, those goods don't have the blessing of God on them. Do you know what I'm saying? They don't have the, better than the blessing of God, they don't have the touch of God. I mean, I'm just, immediately, I, I just think about, uh, I can't even remember which book, one of the historical books, and um, there's these guys, and they're digging this this grave for this one guy that died, and the, Mar the Midianites come riding through and they get scared and everything and they throw him in the tomb of, uh, of Elisha and the guy comes alive. Amen. Life comes out of someone else's death. Amen. He comes alive. You know? And, you know, there's some, there's some power in that reality but if there's power in that reality, there is lack of power in the reality that you can't wait for death prodigal son you can't wait for it you got to have it all you got to have it now you got to have it while the father's alive you got to uh, take the things that are his and squander it because you will because there's no death you're gonna squander it even if it's of God even if it came from the father even if that guess what you're gonna end up doing you'll squander it <clears throat> so that reality has to come home and we talked about that that when he came back because he did he did come to a realization he said he came back and he said father i have sinned against heaven in other words kind of like the the story of the the quail you know i've sinned against heaven of of, of that reality from that's there compared to this one i've sinned against that and Father, I've sinned against you. And so, and maybe I didn't make it absolutely clear, but when, you know, uh, the scripture says that he divided unto them his goods, it's talking about he went ahead and gave the elder son his, to his double portion. So he gave away all of his goods. And I, um, I don't think I wrote it down. I think I was just meditating on it today. The, the goods, what would those goods consist of that the father had that he'd amassed his whole life? There would be, there would be um, important things there would be precious things. There would be sentimental things. And, they, and many of those things, the prodigal would have no clue. It would, it would be a little bit like one of the things, this is me, of course, but a little bit like one of the things would be that the, the prodigal, uh, in his one-third, he gets a uh, 1966 Gibson Les Paul guitar. And he takes it down to a pawn shop and gets a hundred dollars for it. Just kill me now, you know. <laughs> you know, just kill me now, you know. Have no clue. First of all, just on the, the worth level, he he may not know anything about it. He may not know the story behind it. So it's not just what it's worth. He may not know the story behind it, how he got it or what he used it for in his youth, or, you, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to paint a picture. 
doesn't really understand the value of any of it or the preciousness of it, where that came from or where this thing over here came from. He just goes, well, I need money, you know, I'm getting low now, you know, because, uh, you know, he started spending all and then it's, oh, I, got, I got to, you know, so he starts selling off stuff that was the father's living or was precious to the father or was of deep sentimental value or, or all these things that the son just doesn't know because he never took the time to know his father, you know. And we all know about Jesus, but do we really know our father by Jesus? And the prodigal started learning the son by the father, but he was learning the son that's in him. Maybe he'd heard the, you know, maybe the father had preached, you know, you need Christ formed in you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it, that lesson doesn't come home until, you know, until certain circumstances set things in motion to make us realize what, I mean, you know, the prodigal son there alone in the hog pen, maybe at night, listening to the hogs, smelling it, eating their food. And we read that it says, you know, kind of came to himself. Maybe coming to himself said, what have I done? What have I done? And he realizes everything that the father had given him was gone. Everything. All right, now I've already told this part, but when, when he comes back and he sees what's in the father's face and he sees past, I can get bread from the father, right? Just another, you know, but he did say, make me as one of thy hired servants. He got low, and when he did that, the father said, I can reveal the son now. I think that, that there might be an opening here, because those openings don't come very often, do they? You know, when they come, he has to get it in there. And he, he realizes this whole thing wasn't about me. And to the father, it wasn't really about what, what he lost. It's about the son being revealed. Yeah. It's about the son being revealed in that son. Yes. And what does the father say? The father says, now, and I'll say it like this, and, and there are a lot of things I've probably said in this class over however long I've been teaching this that you might think, where do you get that from? Just keep coming with me and I'll show you exactly where I get it from. I'll show you that comes right out of the word of God. And the father, father says, this, my son was dead. There's the death. And with the death, there has to be a firstborn. And the prodigal he was the one who died and now he gets the ring the signet ring and he gets the robe of the father and he is now treated as the firstborn again you're going how do you get that just hang with me I have plenty not just one not just two I have plenty of places that I can prove that this is exactly what happened in other words where is it I would say it's the very last statement on here somewhere if I got it I wrote uh, the little title it's only like three short sentences here that, but the little title above it is the son who gets the inheritance prodigal son story the son who gets the inheritance the elder son missed it the prodigal son got it he got Jesus which was the inheritance the father wanted him to have all along I got chills yes <laughs> That's what he wanted all along. He's, he is the firstborn. <laughs> it's great stuff. I, the, the signs are up and I'm quitting. So y'all be, yeah, y'all be blessed. I tell you, the Lord is doing something. 
the Lord is doing something. I'm, I'm not just saying that. I, I know that the Lord's doing something. And, and um, I, I just want to ask you to be gentle one to another. Be gentle. Be, be lower than everyone around you so that you can be gentle. <laughs> Don't be above them because you won't be gentle. Just be gentle. Let, let Christ do that and be that in you. Let his spirit overwhelm your desire for flesh. Amen. Father, we thank you for what you are saying and doing. We want more than that. We want what's in your heart. And I don't think a one of us really fully know what that is. But we want what's in your heart. And so we're, 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 we believe that you, not us, but you are moving us towards openness. You are moving us towards brokenness. You are moving us toward a, a more ready ear, swift to hear and slow to speak, which is real hard for us. But by your heart, I could say by your grace, but it's your graciousness, which happens to be your heart. By your heart, you are doing this. And so we say as much as we can with a resounding from our heart and from our inner core, we say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. All right. Thank you, God.